My name is Nick Iverson and I'm an enrolled agent with Elevation Tax. The framework for the application of the federal income tax to individuals is the tax formula. Today in this video I hope to provide you with a basic understanding of and the flow of the components of the tax formula. This is the Form 1040, the U.S. Individual Income Tax Return. It is one page, front and back, with 79 lines. Looks simple, right? Well, it isn't. Completing any line of the 1040 will likely require you to complete and attach to the return additional schedules and or forms. Many lines of the additional schedules will require forms of their own and worksheets to be completed, and many lines of the forms will require their own worksheets to be completed. The supporting documents required to be filed with this one-page form may be 100 pages or greater. In 2015, there were approximately 375 schedules and forms that could accompany the Form 1040, and that does not include the worksheets that would be required to complete the schedules and forms. Nevertheless, the tax formula itself is simple, even if the components to arrive at each particular point of the formula are very complex. A general understanding of the tax formula can prove very beneficial to taxpayers seeking to reduce their tax liability through tax planning. So here is the formula. Income, less exclusions, gives you gross income. You can subtract your deductions for adjusted gross income to arrive at adjusted gross income. You may then subtract your total itemized deductions or the standard deduction and any personal and dependency exemptions that you qualify for to arrive at your total taxable income. Your tax on taxable income is calculated and you can deduct any tax credits that you qualify for to arrive at the total tax liability due for the tax year. Let's break it down. In the tax formula, income is broadly conceived and includes all of a taxpayer's income, both taxable and non-taxable. What is an exclusion? Certain types of income are excluded from the income tax base, meaning you do not have to pay tax on this income. Exclusions from income are selected by Congress for various reasons. Here is a partial list of some of the most common exclusions. You may want to pause the video to re review this and other lists. The Internal Revenue Code defines gross income broadly as, quote, except as otherwise provided, all income from whatever source derived. Close quote. The except as otherwise provided refers to exclusions. Gross income includes, but is not limited to, the following items. And there are a lot of items and so there are two pages worth. And here is page two. Deductions for adjusted gross income are taken before arriving at adjusted gross income. Last week's video defined deductions, exemptions, and credits. So if you would like to review that information, click here to watch that video. These include, but are not limited to, the following. Be aware that many of these items are subject to computational limitations. As a general rule, personal expenditures are disallowed as deductions in arriving at taxable income. However, Congress allows specific personal expenses as deductions from AGI. In addition, taxpayers are allowed itemized deductions for expenses relating to 1. the production or collection of income and 2. the management of property held for the production of income. Itemized deductions include, but are not limited to, medical expenses, certain taxes 
and interest, charitable contributions, and some other miscellaneous expenses. The standard deduction is specified by Congress and depends on the filing status of the taxpayer. The standard deduction is to exempt a taxpayer's income up to a specified amount from federal income tax liability. A taxpayer who is age 65 or over or blind qualifies for an additional standard deduction. The amounts on this table apply to the 2016 tax year. A taxpayer will take the standard deduction unless itemizing yields a higher deduction, but will not take both. The use of exemptions in this system is based in part on the idea that a taxpayer with a small amount of income should be exempt from federal income taxation. An exemption frees a specified amount of income from tax. A personal exemption is allowed for the taxpayer and spouse. A taxpayer is permitted to claim an exemption for each person who qualifies as a dependent. We have now arrived at taxable income. This amount, along with the taxpayer's filing status, specifies what tax bracket a taxpayer is in and what tax rates are used in calculating tax on taxable income. Remember, the United States uses a progressive tax system. Calculating tax liability using the progressive method can be reviewed watching our video on determining tax liability. Tax credits reduce your tax liability dollar for dollar to arrive at total tax liability for the year. The most common tax credits for the 2015 tax year are displayed in this visual. Review our list of videos for details on specific credits. Here is a basic example of using the tax formula, and this is for illustrative purposes only. Jack and Jill are married and file a joint return in 2016. They have one child. Their total income for the year is $85,000, but $15,000 is excludable from income. They have $7,500 that qualifies as a deduction for adjusted gross income. Between their charitable contributions, mortgage interest, and taxes paid, they are able to itemize $20,000 in deductions from AGI and therefore do not take the standard deduction. They each receive an exemption of $4,050 and take one for their child. Finally, they qualify for the child tax credit. What is the total tax due for the year? Well, let's plug that into the tax formula. Income is $85,000 less the $15,000 Exclusion gives gross income of $70,000. They are able to take out their deductions for adjusted gross income of $7,500 to get an adjusted gross income amount of $62,500. They subtract their total itemized deductions of $20,000 and they take out the personal and dependency exemptions of $12,150 to arrive at a taxable income of $30,350. The tax computation on this taxable income yields total tax of $3,625. They are able to take $1,000 for the child tax credit, which leaves them a tax due of $2,625. I should mention at this point that if the taxpayer made estimated tax payments or had taxes withheld from wages paid throughout the year, there would be a place on the return where total tax already paid to the IRS would be listed. If the amount already paid exceeds the tax due, the taxpayer would be issued a tax refund. If the total tax paid for the year is less than the total tax due, then the taxpayer would need to make an additional tax payment by the filing deadline. For additional tips and tax saving strategies, click here to schedule a free, no obligation consultation. Also, be sure to sign up for our monthly newsletter and subscribe to our YouTube channel for weekly updates. If you have a question you'd like us to answer, 
please leave it in the comments below.